Now, if you have spent any amount of time looking into the anti-vaccine movement or bad science, then you will be familiar with Andrew Wakefield, who is pretty much the poster boy for both anti-vax and bad science. Now, in a nutshell, Andrew Wakefield was responsible for the MMR vaccine scare just over 20 years ago and has since become the figurehead of the anti-vax movement. He carried out a study which linked the MMR vaccine to autism, which was very quickly shown to be a really bad study. Now, in this video, I'm going to stray away from scientific theory, specifically immunology and pathology. Now, although I have a pretty decent understanding of these topics, I'm not qualified to make any authoritative statement about the actual mechanisms of how vaccines work. I'm a physicist, not a physician. However, I am a human being, and it does give me the qualification and authority to say that Andrew Wakefield is a piece of shit. Most people who have heard of Andrew Wakefield probably think that he was just a doctor that got it wrong and was too proud to admit it. There's, of course, the anti-vax movement, which regard him as a hero who stood up against the man and defied big pharmaceutical companies as he threatened their revenue stream. Now, I'm not going to argue that big pharmaceutical companies are the good guys because there are massive problems within the pharmaceutical industry and how this sector operates. And this will probably be the subject of another video. I mainly want to address how the anti-vax community see him, because it is not true that he was just a doctor with the best intentions who was too proud to admit his mistakes, neither was he a hero. Going into this, I always thought that Andrew Wakefield was actually a guy who just fucked up in a study and doubled down to try and protect his public image. Now this would be utterly contemptible, but now I've done a bit of research, I can conclude that this guy's fucking evil. Now, the whole story is pretty twisty-turny, but the best place to start is at the beginning. Now, all indications are that Wakefield was a pretty decent gastroenterologist doing research on tissue rejection in small intestine transplants. He appeared to have stumbled across a finding which would suggest that there's a link between a measles virus and Crohn's disease. Now, he investigated this further and published a paper in 1993 stating that there was a link, although not causal. The next step seemed quite reasonable to me. He then investigated whether there was a link between the MMR vaccine and Crohn's disease. Now, in 1995, he published his findings, claiming that there was a link between MMR vaccine and Crohn's disease. Again, not a causal link. As autism and Crohn's disease are comorbid, it appears that he made a reasonable step to then look into the link between MMR and autism. However, this step was actually not that reasonable. As for the two years after the 1995 paper, the scientific community tried and failed to reproduce the result. But regardless, he carried on and published a paper in 1998, which reports on a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. In addition, he also claims to have discovered this condition called autistic enterocolitis, which doesn't exist. But to his credit, the paper does state that they found a link, but not a causal link. Now, this is because there were only 12 participants in the study, and there's no way that a causal link could be established in such a small sample size. Now, upon publication of the paper, he also held a press release, and in his press release, he advises people to avoid the MMR vaccine and opt in for a single-purpose measles vaccine instead. Now, I'm just going to go through a few dates and see how it progressed from here. Because in November 2000, Wakefield appeared on US television on a program called 60 Minutes, where he urges parents to avoid MMR in favor of the single purpose vaccine. Now, in March 2003, the MMR immunization rate in the UK drops down to 78.9%, which is too low for herd immunity. Now, in March 2004, the 1998 paper's interpretation was retracted by 10 of the authors, and they reiterated that there was no causal link found. But in 2004, a fourfold increase in mumps is reported, and a number of cases would triple again in 2005. In October 2005, the Cochrane Library published a meta-analysis which clearly states that there is no link between the MMR and autism. But in April 2006, a 13-year-old boy dies of measles, 14 years after the last known measles death in the UK. Now, on the surface, this seems like horrible, unintended consequences. It appears that Andrew Wakefield made a mistake by claiming that parents should avoid MMR vaccines in favour of single shots. 
But when you look at the whole truth, a different picture emerges. Just after the 1995 publication linking MMR to Crohn's disease, Wakefield was approached by a woman called Rosemary Keswick, a mother whose child has autism, and she believed that it was the MMR vaccine that caused the autism. She was mounting a lawsuit against the vaccine's manufacturer. The Royal Free Hospital, where Wakefield worked, subsequently received £55,000 in legal aid to carry out research to identify whether this was a valid claim. But this is where it all fell apart. Some of the study's participants were recruited via Keswick's legal representative, and Andrew Wakefield was subsequently paid in excess of £400,000 by the legal firm to provide evidence to back the claim. Now, he never disclosed this conflict of interest. And this is the first alarm bell. The second alarm bell comes in the form of a patent application filed by Andrew Wakefield shortly after publication of the 1998 paper. Remember how we stated that there wasn't a causal link between the MMR vaccine and autism? In the patent application, he actually explicitly states that MMR causes autism. Now, what was the patent for? It was a patent for a new vaccine for measles only, the exact vaccine that Wakefield was encouraging parents to push for instead of MMR. Now, this is where the anti-vax hero status that Andrew Wakefield holds is shown to be ridiculous. He was not an anti-vaxxer, and he definitely did not stand up to Big Pharma. He tried to become Big Pharma. Now, it is true that Andrew Wakefield has since started pushing a more anti-vax rhetoric, but that's because, well, he's clearly a Poe. He knows better. So at this point in the story, I have painted a picture of a doctor carrying out research with vested interest. Now, Andrew Wakefield likes to claim that the scientific establishment tried to shut him down because he was threatening a key revenue stream for big pharmaceutical companies. Now, ironically, the Royal Free Hospital and the Lancet were actually very supportive of him starting a business to sell the single-use vaccines. After his 1998 paper, he was actually rewarded a huge grant to repeat the results using a much larger sample size so he could build a better business case for investors. Now, he never took this up. And the reason becomes clear when we look a bit further. So as I've already said, some of the participants in the study were recruited by Rosemary Keswick's legal representatives. The parents of these children were actually also involved in the legal proceedings. So here is a clear selection bias. But it gets worse. In 2011, a journalist by the name of uh, Brian Deere took Wakefield's table of symptoms, as reported in the study, and compared the sy symptoms as listed by the NHS records. And... The comparison between the two tables clearly showed that Andrew Wakefield falsified the data. A few years before that, in 2005, BBC's Horizon uh, uncovered a study carried out by Wakefield involving 100 normally developed children and 200 children with autism, and finds that for both groups, only 1% showed traces of measles. There was no difference between the groups, and it clearly shows that there was no link. Now, Andrew Wakefield never published these results. Andrew Wakefield would be shooting himself in the foot if he took up the grant that was offered by the Royal Free Hospital, as it would make it very clear that his study was not only flawed, but the results were falsified to try and build a stronger business case for his vaccines. Now, in 2010, Andrew Wakefield was struck off the UK medical register for ethical violations and serious scientific misconduct. His paper was retracted by The Lancet. Within a week of being struck off, he released his autobiography and started his career as an anti-vax hero. Now, this video is getting quite long, so I'm going to leave it here. Between writing this script and recording it, an excellent episode of Behind the Bastards uh, was released on Andrew Wakefield, and Robert Evans goes into this with a lot of detail. So I definitely recommend checking that one out, along with Brian Deere's coverage of the topic for the Sunday Times and the British Medical Journal. You can find all of that at briandeer.com. But to close, I have a very simple message for anti-vaxxers. Andrew Wakefield is not a hero who stood up against the big pharmaceutical companies and is not the target of a large conspiracy trying to discredit his work. He is, however, a bad scientist who used falsified data to create a scare so he could profit of mothers who are scared of their children being harmed. He embodies everything that you accuse big pharmaceutical companies of.
But that's it from me for now. So please like, subscribe and tick on my bell so you can receive notifications when I upload more ramblings.